Okay. Use the trapezoidal rule with n equal to 4 to approximate the length of the curve given parametrically by x equals cosine cubed of t, y equals sine cubed of t, where t is in between 0 and pi over 2. Give your answer to four decimal places. <clears throat> All right. Um, so trapezoidal rule is just a way of approximating an integral. Whatever integral you come up with, uh, trapezoidal rule will be a way to approximate that integral by summing up some terms. So first, let's start by um, stating what trapezoidal rule is. And basically, the trapezoidal rule says that any, oh my gosh, it says that, okay, sorry. It says that any integral from the interval a to b of any function, we'll call that f sub t. Actually, you know what? I'm going to write over here because it's kind of a lengthy formula. It's not complicated. It's just lengthy. So I'm going to start over here. Um, any integral from a to b of a function, you know, that's differentiable, meaning it has to be continuous and, and you know, uh, no discontinuity or anything. Um, it can be approximated by this trapezoidal rule, T sub n, of however many terms we have. <clears throat> and what the trapezoidal rule is, is it's just gonna be your, it's gonna be the change in T on that interval, your delta T, divided by, you know, the number of terms. The more terms you have, the larger n is, the more accurate trapezoidal rule is. Um, but that's gonna be multiplied by your function of f sub t zero plus two times f of t sub one plus two of f sub t two. And you just keep on going like that forever and ever until you get to uh, f sub t n minus one, which just means the term before the last term. So it's the one, the term before the final term in your, in your little uh, sequence here. And then finally, plus the last term, f of t sub n, the final term. If you notice the trapezoidal rule, what makes it kind of unique is that the first f sub t has a coefficient of one and the final f sub t has a coefficient of one. All the f sub t's in between have this coefficient of two in front of it. So it's only the last ones that don't have any coefficient or a coefficient of one, but everyone in between has a coefficient of two. So that's nice. That's what trapezoidal rule is. Uh, we just need to apply it, um, the information given here from this question. Um, it's a parametric equation. So, um, and you're basically looking for, where did it say up here? It said length, right? All right, cool, length. So the equation to find the length, basically we're gonna fill in the left side of this integral here. Um, it's gonna be um, the arc length integral. If you remember the arc length integral, um, that's the one that we're going to use here. Um, so I'm just gonna write down that information. So it's going to be the integral from a to b. a in this case is going to be your lower limit of t, so this zero here, right? Zero. Your upper limit is going to be this one, this pi over two, pi over two. And the function f of t is just going to be the equation for arc length, which if you recall just states it's the square root of dx over dt squared plus um, dy over dt squared. And if you had a third dimension, if you were in three dimensions, there'd be a plus dz over dt squared as well. But we're only in two dimensions, so this is as far as we'll go. And then you have this dt. This is the integral that the trapezoidal rule, basically we gotta approximate using our trapezoidal rule. But we got to fill this in. We can't just leave it as dx and dy. We actually have to fill it in using the information up here given. So let's take this information down real fast. Um, 
Mm, x is equivalent to cosine cubed of t, and then y you told me is equivalent of sine cubed of t, right? So first things we got to find is the dx dt and dy dt, and then we're going to square them after we find them. So doing that, um, we're just going to take, you know, dx of dt, so that equals the derivative with respect to time of this cosine cubed of 3t, right? And the derivative of cosine cubed is going to be what? We just drag the 3 down. It's going to be, um, what is that? It's like 3 cosine of squared t times the derivative of the inside uh, of cosine itself is just a negative sign. I'm using chain rule here. So that's the dx dt, all right? Um, do the same thing for uh, y here. So we're going to say, OK, what is dy dt? Well, dy dt is just going to be the derivative with respect to time of this sine cubed function. And it's like the same thing, except no negatives. You drag the 3 down in front. You're left with a sine squared, reduce the power by 1, sine squared t, multiplied by the derivative of sine, which is just cosine, a positive cosine of t. All right, those are the derivatives. And um, let's go ahead and square them. Let's go ahead and square them. So what's going to be our dx dt squared? Just do that real quick. Well, it's just going to be this 3 cosine squared negative sine t squared. So really quickly, you know, 3 squared is 9. Cosine squared squared is going to be cosine to the fourth power of t. The negative sine t squared is going to be a positive sine squared of t. And then the uh, dy dt is going to be just as similar. If you were to square that, it's going to be very similar. You're going to get a 9 you're going to get a sine to the fourth um, t, and you're going to get a cosine squared t. There we go. So, oh, whoops, I forgot my little square term here. That is dy dt squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to just take this, and we're going to evaluate it into our arc length formula over here. We're just going to replace this dx dt's and this dy dt. We're going to replace them with these values we got here. So doing that really quickly, we get the integral from 0 to pi over 2. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the square root as, you know, a uh, raised to the 1 half power. I'll do that at the end uh, just because it'll I'll have to draw a really long line. I don't want to draw a long line. <laughs> but essentially, you have what? You have 9 cosine to the fourth of t sine squared of t plus 9 sine to the fourth of t um, cosine squared of t. All right, and then like as I promised, I'm going to write that as the 1 half power. <clears throat> you can write it either way. It's just easier for me to write it as a 1 half uh, dt. Um, so if we haven't even touched the right side, we haven't even done anything with the trapezoidal part yet. Uh, we're still on this left side over here. And we need to simplify this because really what I'm doing is I'm looking for f of t. Because if you notice what's in common on the left side of the integral here and on the right side in the trapezoidal rule is you have an f of t, f of t, f of t. So that's what really what we have to find. f of t is pretty much what we have written here with all this cosines and sines and raised to the one half power. If I want to, I could just use this and go ahead and plug it into my trapezoidal rule. But I don't want to do that. I want to simplify this as small as I can get it first before I start plugging it in, because that means it will be uh, less writing on our part. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Notice here that you got two terms under the square root. Um, notice that you have a 9 in common with both terms. So we're going to factor out a 9, but still be inside the square root. We're still inside. Um, 9. What else do they have in common? Well, looks like they have a sine squared in common, right? They have sine squared. So I'm going to rip out a sine squared t. All right, cool. And what else do they have in common? Uh, they had sine squared in common, but they also have cosine squared in common, both terms, right? They have a cosine squared. So I'm going to 
factor that one out too, cosine squared. So that's what came on the outside. What would be left if we took that out? Well, if you take two cosines away from four cosines, you're left with, you know, cosine squared of t. The nine, you know, it came out to the front here. It's just chilling out front. Um, looking at this sine squared is gone. We ripped that out to the front. That was the first thing we ripped out. Now, next here, we're looking at this sine fourth. If you took sine squared away from sine fourth, you would be left with sine squared of t, right? And if we took cosine squared away from cosine squared, factor that out to the front here, well, there would be no cosine squared left. And so we're just left with a single sine squared t. And so this is what this becomes right now. And this is nice because here inside the parentheses, this term evaluates to the number one. Cosine squared plus sine squared is just the number one. So really what we're left with, oops, I'm forgetting this part. I always forget. So really what we're left with is the integral from zero to pi over two and the square root of nine sine squared cosine squared of t, sine squared of t, cosine squared of t, we're all in the, the square root. And this is cool because these are all perfect squares in the square root here. And so we can take the square root of every single one of them, oops, dt, <laughs> um, and I trust you know what the square root is. Square root of nine is just gonna be three. The square root of sine squared is gonna be sine of t. And then the square root of cosine squared is just gonna be what? Cosine, um, cosine of t. And look at that. So with a little bit of math, we were able to simplify our f of t function. So now it's a little simpler. It's just sine and cosine instead of this entire polynomial composing of trig functions. Cool. So that was a lot. And that was the preemptive work. That's like the work you have to do before you even start the problem with the trapezoidal rule. Now that we've done the preemptive work, we can actually continue on with the trapezoidal rule. So if we look at the trapezoidal rule, we see some terms. Uh, we see this delta t and this n. Well, n was already stated in your problem. n was going to equal 4. We know what n is. But what is delta t? Delta t is just going to be the difference between your upper bound and your lower bound uh, unit, right? It's going to be the difference between b minus a. And I think it's divided by, mm, let me see real quick. Oh, man. Um, I totally blanked with the trapezoidal row over here. It's B minus A, and I believe it's divided by um, 4, by N as well. Oh, uh, okay, I have this trapezoidal row mixed up. Trapezoidal row, you divide by 2 here. But the delta T is B minus A over N. My mistake, my mistake, where N equals 4. Sorry, trapezoidal rule is delta t over 2. Uh, my mistake. Anyways, continuing onward, um, our delta t in this case is going to be our b minus a. Our upper limit was pi over 2. Our lower limit was 0. And our n is 4. n is 4. So essentially, what we have here is um, pi over 2 over 4 which is just going to equal pi over 8. This is what our delta t, delta t equals. OK, cool. And so when we put that over 2, um, when we put that over 2, we have delta t divided by 2. That's just going to equal pi over 8 divided by 2, which is pi over 16. So that's definitely what we're going to use in our trapezoidal rule. OK. Um, so I'm going to scroll down a bit. Just take one last peek at this trapezoidal rule. Notice that we have f sub t of 0, f of t of sub 1, f of t sub 2. Um, what that means is like we're going to start by plugging for f of t sub 0. You're going to plug in your lower bound into your f of t function. 
And let me just clarify what the f of t function was. The f of t function here is going to be what we found here under the integral. It's just whatever we were going to integrate by. That's the function. That's a simplified function. So f of t in our case is going to be 3 sine of t cosine of t, and uh, that's it. Basically, we're going to replace these t's now with like t sub 0, t sub 1, t sub 2. But what is t sub 0, t sub 1, t sub 2? Well, we'll make a quick list of those. Um, t sub 1 or t sub 0 is always going to be the lowest bound. It's going to be your a term. Where's a? a was uh, 0, right? So it's going to be 0, right? t sub 1 is going to be the previous term, t sub two, 0, plus um, plus your uh, plus your delta t, right? t sub 0 plus delta t, which in this case is going to be 0 plus whatever delta t was, pi over 8. So that means that that just equals pi over 8. That's t sub 1, right? So that's what we're going to plug in for the second term. T sub 2, likewise, is going to be T sub 1 plus delta T. So that's going to be what? Pi over 8 plus pi over 8. That equals 2 pi over 8, which reduces down to pi over 4. That's T sub 2. And we're going to just keep doing this until we go up to our upper limit. Our upper limit is what? Uh, pi over 2. So we're going to keep doing this until we get to pi over 2, and then that's when we're going to stop. So uh, t sub 3 is just going to be what? t sub 2 plus delta t, which equals pi over 4 plus pi over 8. That's like saying 2 pi over 8 plus pi over 8. So that equals 3 pi over 8. And we just keep doing this. We keep going until we, uh, until we get to that pi over 2 value. This is t sub 3 plus delta t which equals 3 pi over 8 plus pi over 8. That equals what? That equals 4 pi over 8, which reduces down to pi over 2. And there we go. We can stop doing it now because that is the upper limit of the integral. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so now that we have each of these values, we're just going to go through one by one and plug them into our f of t function. Right, there's there should be five of them. Why am I only counting four? Oh, because zero is one as well. We're gonna plug in the zero as well, and that's gonna be the first value we plug in. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit here, and I'm gonna uh, find out what f sub t sub zero is. So I'm gonna make another little list here. This is the easiest way to do it. f of t sub zero. Um, what is that? So that's going to be 3 sine, plugging in this 0 here for t, sine of 0, cosine of 0. Well, you know that sine of 0 is just 0. It's going to change this whole product to 0. So it's a big, fat 0. There we go. Now we'll do the next one. f of t sub 1 equals 3 sine of what was t sub 1? t sub 1 was pi over 8. Pi over 8. Cosine of what? Pi over 8. OK, so for this, we'll use a calculator. I have a graphing calculator on my desk here. Well, it's more of an emulator for my phone. And I'm going to find out what these values are. So this is going to be 3 times what? What is sine of? Um, pi divided by 8. Wait, where's the pi button? Oh, it's right here. <clears throat> OK, and that's approximately 0 0.3827, if we're rounding to four decimal places. I believe your question said, Round to four decimal places. And then we're going to do the same thing with cosine. 
So this is just a rhythmic tick here, cosine of my pi divided by eight. That equals this value here, 0 0.923. Nine. If we're rounding the four decimal places, go ahead and multiply all this together. Three, eight, two, seven. Mm -hmm. And I got about, mm, I got about one point zero six zero seven. All right, cool. That's f sub t sub one. Now we'll do this again for f sub uh, f of t sub two. So three sine. All right, this time not pi over eight, but pi over four. That's an easy one. We don't even need a calculator for that. All right. Um, that's just going to be what? That's going to be three times uh, root. 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2, which is going to be 3 times 2 over 4, or better yet, 6 over 4, which is like, how many is that? 6 over 4, it's like two, three, three halves, right? Yeah, so that's like 1.5. All right, remember that number? I'm just going to go ahead and do it again. F of t sub 3 is going to equal 3 sine, this time 3 pi over 8, correct? Cosine of 3 pi over 8, which is just going to be 3 times, so that I will use a calculator for, let's see, sine of, let's see, 3 pi. Oops, pi over eight. Three times. So the sine value came to be about 0 0.9239. And then the cosine value will be cosine of three pi divided by eight, 0 0.3827, which is funny. If you look at the first, the numbers, of, this actually makes sense. If you look at F sub T sub one, it's the exact same numbers. They're just switched from cosine and sine. Like the cosine became sine and the sine became cosine. And that's how it should work because, you know, sine and cosine are part of a circle. That means when you multiply all these out, you're going to get the exact same number, 1.0607, as we did up top. So just notice that this number is the same as that number. This number is the same as that number. That's what you would expect when you're going around a circle, it is for your sine and cosine to swap values. OK, enough of that. So f sub t, f of t sub 4, that's going to be what? 3 of sine of pi over 2 to do cosine of pi over 2. Well, this is nice because sine of pi over 2 is 1, but cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that transforms this whole product into 0. So that gives us a big fat 0. So cool. We got all our terms listed out. We have all the pieces listed out to complete this trapezoidal roll. All we got to do is you know sum them together. So just scrolling up and taking a peek at our trapezoidal uh, rule formula thing. Like I said, the, the first term and the last term in the sequence, that's going to be, in our case, our t sub 0 and our f of t sub 4. They have a coefficient of 1, where everything else in between needs to be multiplied by 2. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, so trapezoidal rule says it's delta t over 2, right, times all this stuff. And our delta t, we knew what that value was. We calculated it earlier. So I'm actually going to write that in. Delta t over 2, in fact, equals 16. 
c here delta t or two we calculated earlier it's it's pi over 16 yeah so i'm actually going to just write pi over 16. pi oops oops pi divided by 16. Cool. Everything at the end will be multiplied by this pi over 16. So we're going to plug in our first term with no coefficient, our first f of t sub 0 right here. f of t sub 0 equaled 0. So we're going to pop that in. We're going to plus a 2, which is a part of the formula, right? And 2 is going to be multiplied by our f, sub, f of t sub 1, which is this decimal here, 1.0607, plus another 2 times our middle term. So f of t sub 2 is 1.5. So I'm going to do 1.5. And then our plus our f uh, 2 f of t sub 3, which f of t sub 3 is the same thing as f of t sub 1 because we're dealing with like a circle here. And um, so that's going to be, whoops, I actually wrote f of t sub 3. My bad. Don't want to do that. We're actually evaluating these these numbers in 1.0607, and then plus our final term doesn't get a two. It has a coefficient of one, f of t sub four, but it doesn't matter anyways what the coefficient would be because it's just going to be multiplied to zero anyways. So plus zero like that. So cool. Now we just do a little bit of math to figure out what these numbers are. Um, so, you know, start inside the parentheses and we'll do two times, what is it? 1.067, no, 607. All right, and I got 2.1214. Um, two times 1.5 here is going to be a three and then once again this is going to be 2.1214 because it's the exact same thing as f sub t sub one so doing quick arithmetic here we're almost at the end <laughs> we're almost there just a little bit more arithmetic we're going to get um 2.12 plus 2.12 is going to be what it's going to be 4.2428 plus three all right, very good, very good. Pi over 16. And then uh, that's just going to be 7.2428 times this pi over 16. Look at our approximation. We're getting very, very close now. Um, so since, you're, since your question specified, like, give your answer in decimal places, we're going to give it in decimal places. So we're going to do 3.14 times this. We're going to do um pi or 3.14 times 7.2428 that should be like 20 20 uh 22 or something yeah it is cool so this becomes 22.7539 to four decimal places divided by 16 cool and so that is going to approximately be, looks like uh, like one and a half or something close. I got, my calculator gave 1.4221 for my approximation. And that's, that's good. That's a pretty good approximation. Um, you can always check yourself by doing the integral. In fact, the problem would have probably been a lot easier if we had just done this integral up here. If we had just integrated this, um, you would actually find that the integral comes to about 1.5. If you were to go through and put the effort in and integrate this, you will find that this integral comes to 1.5. Our trapezoidal approximation came to 1.4221, which is pretty close to 1.5. If we had taken a larger n, if we had allowed this n to be something larger, like maybe 6 or maybe like eight or even like 12, we would be a lot closer to 1.5. But n is four, so it's pretty general. So we got close enough. Um, this is a pretty good result. I'm, I think I'm happy with this 
<clears throat> considering how small the end value is. But um, yeah, that's how you do this problem. That's how you, um, this is the length of the line. And just to show you what this parametric equation kind of looks like and what we were calculating here, um, is why here's x. Basically, it's just a circle. Whenever you see cosine cubed plus, cosine to any power, cosine to any power plus a sine to the same power, whatever that power may be, it's just gonna be a circle. So basically we had a circle here and what the question really wanted you to do was calculate the length of the circle from zero, which is at this point zero to pi over two, which is up here. So basically you were calculating this part of the circle and it's about 1.5, which makes sense because if you were to multiply it by four, you would get like uh, six, which is like close to two pi, right? That, or I'm sorry, yeah, which is close to two pi, which is like full one full revolution. So we only went a quarter revolution, so we should get two pi over four, which is uh, like, what is that, pi over two or something? I don't know, but that doesn't matter. That's just some insight. What's important is knowing how to use this trapezoidal rule and um, using it to our full potential like we just did today. All right, I hope that uh, creates a better understanding and I hope you're able to solve the, this problem and any future problems like it. Um, thank you for watching my presentation. And if you're still here at the end, um, thanks for listening to me. <laughs>